Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video we're going to be covering the new features of Photoshop CC version 2017. So to get started, if we go to the File New menu, you'll notice that it's got a bit of an overhaul here where we can see the recent templates we've actually chosen from displayed in a grid-like fashion. And if we go over here to these stock built-in uh, templates, you can see that they have quite a few for different categories. Art and illustration, film and video, obviously really good for thumbnails right there, mobile devices, and photographs. When you use one of those templates, it'll show up here in the recent items. And if you ever want to define your own template, you can click this button over here and save your settings below into the saved category. If we go up to the edit menu and look for search, this is new to 2017 where you can search stock photography. You can search tutorials, which I imagine will be very helpful to you guys out there. And you can search Photoshop terminology, which would be when you don't understand or you don't know where something's located, like let's say crop. And then it'll give you all the terms that are related to that, including the crop tool. So we'd actually be able to select crop from right here and use that in our document as if we had selected it from the toolbar directly, which is really cool. There's two new built-in fonts to Photoshop, which is Trajan Color Concept and also Emoji Color, which would be typing with emojis, literally. Let's actually go ahead and try that out for you guys here. So when we have the Emoji 1 font pulled up, you can see all of the emojis over here that we can place in the document. Um, now, I guess you could use the Unicodes to manually insert them, but I imagine just using this glyph adder is probably the best way to do it. So let's go ahead and add a couple emojis over here. So we would just double click on a couple. We can scroll down, add in some more. And yeah, there you go. It's kind of like Skype in a way. So in 2017, they've done a couple updates to masking inside the program. So if we go up to select and then select a mask, alternatively Alt-Control-R on your keyboard, then we'll be able to draw and select different parts of our document and output whatever we select to create a new layer mask. So using the tools over here on the left, we'll actually be able to modify the layer mask for this particular layer that we went into here with. So you can see in the bottom right, it outputs to layer mask. The layer mask by default is all white, which means completely covering the layer. But if we hold alt down or just left click to select the negative, we can subtract from that layer. So let's go and grab some large sections of our layer. And if we hit OK, we'll be able to see the layer mask right to the right of our layer with everything that affects it. So the liquify feature inside of Photoshop now is able to detect faces and be able to manipulate the eyes uh, based on what it detects. So we'll go to filter liquify in order to modify this and you can see that it's detected face one over here. I did try it with a dog's face and unfortunately it seems that it only works with humans at the moment. But you can click this lock over here and modify, let's say, the size of the eye. You can see it's scaling the eyes up and down, the height of the eye, the width of the eye, and the tilt of the eye. Now, of course, you're going to want to probably make them symmetrical in how you change things. Unless, of course, one eye, for some reason, is not like the others and you want to get them more perfect, then you could uncheck one and you can modify one individually until you get it in the right angle that you need it to be. But you can modify more than just the eyes with this feature. You can also reshape the face by adjusting sizes to give the person a different facial structure. Modify chin height. You may have noticed that when I was modifying her face that uh, it also does have some effect on things like the background. So anything you don't want to affect, you can use the freeze mask tool over here to make sure that it doesn't get modified when we adjust things, or distort them rather, inside of our image. Likewise, we can use the thaw tool in order to remove some of those frozen areas so that they can be modified again. And then we can use tools such as twirl clockwise, pucker, bloat, and push left to modify our character. So uh, let's go ahead and freeze some of the face, and we'll show how it won't work at all when you do have it frozen. We'll go ahead, thought, 
And then let's go ahead and use the pucker tool. And you can see how it drastically distorts the face. Now, to get good results, you're going to have to spend a lot more time with this, of course. But let's say that you do mess something up, like damaging her lips there, and you want to redo some of that. You can use the reconstruct tool to kind of go back. It'll try to revert things to its original shape. But note that that only applies to the original shape since you've saved it. So if you've already gone ahead and hit OK, committed the changes, um, then you might not be able to undo that so easily. So in order to distort the image, how Photoshop works here with the liquify tool is that it's actually modifying a mesh. So if we go ahead and use the pucker tool again, you'll notice that those perfect grid lines actually get really distorted here and that's affecting the image preview. Um, so with these meshes, if we want to take the same one that we've been creating for one image and apply it to another image, we can go ahead and hit Save Mesh here. So we'll say Liquify Mesh Test 1, hit OK. We can hit Cancel on this image, and we could load up another image. But here, for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to go back into the Liquify tool, and we're just going to load that mesh straight into this. So in a way, you can save a distortion effect for reuse in other images or copies of the same image that you may be playing around with in different Photoshop files. Okay, one last thing about the liquify changes inside of Photoshop. If you have, let's say, something like a transparent background and you plan to splice this person into another, uh, let's say, scene, you can add a backdrop inside of liquify. So in order for this to work, we're going to have to have other layers inside of our Photoshop document. So here I've put a dark behind her. And uh, we're going to have to go to Filter Liquify here. And you'll see that there's a difference between having the layer there showing the backdrop. Then you have to select the layer that you actually want to modify with Liquify. Go to Filter Liquify. And you notice that it doesn't show any of the other layers. Well, that's the backdrop we're talking about. So if we want that to actually show, we hit Show Backdrop. We can set an opacity so that it's a little bit more visible. But the only thing we're going to be modifying is the layer that we selected. So if I try to do some changes over here, you can see it doesn't affect whatever's in the background. But it does allow us to preview how the image will look, combined with the other layers in our document. So that just about wraps up the main changes in Photoshop CC 2017. As you can see, a lot of it has to do with the new features in Liquify. So if playing around with people's faces and making them more beautiful is something that you are really looking to, you're probably going to appreciate the 2017 update to Photoshop. But as always, it's a fantastic tool. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you guys in my future content.